the end of March 2017 and this is our first small holding update of the new year. It's spring, it's sunny at last, so we thought we'd crack on. Um, so we're just in the top field looking down and the willows that we planted from whips and cuttings two years ago are really taking shape and taking hold in this uh, boggy bit of field. We've obviously bought some uh, other trees, we've bought some alba and we've got some crab apple in here now and the flag iris is again uh, planted about two years ago a spreading, dividing and we're claiming the land back up here and it's looking really great, we're really pleased especially after the uh, hard, long winter that we seem to have had uh, the clocks have gone forward now which means we can start operating if the weather's good more functionally than we have been in our sloth-like sloth -like, uh, shape over the last few months, almost hibernation. Pig fields are uh, taking longer than I expected to recover, but again, that's probably because of the extreme wet weather we've had over the last two months. I mean, we've had so much rain. Hopefully with some drier days and some sunshine, the grass and the wildflowers will start coming back because we're looking to get the pigs back or we'll have more pigs sometime in April and as I say we're already at the back end of March. It certainly gives us around four, maybe five weeks before we've got wheelers again. Hopefully we will have in any case. We're just waiting to hear now from uh, our breeders. So we've been out today continuing with planting more trees in the top field, to say the elder and the crab apple. And we've started to extend the hedging, but everything's coming back to life. And it's great. It's what it's all about on a lovely sunny, sunny spring day. So you, you, you kind of forget how good it feels when you do eventually get out. But everything's doing splendidly well. Everything's coming into bud. And all the hedging that we have bought, I haven't seen any of it fail yet. And as I say, even with our windy, wet conditions, everything seems to have established, taken hold. regenerating for the forthcoming year. It's really pleasing this time of year as well because things start coming back to life and there's things that as a gardener that you've forgotten you've planted and seen the green shoots pushing up through the soil. It's really exciting. It really is exciting. So we're just uh, coming into the old pig field which is now the bee field. Uh, we haven't been as successful as we'd hoped with the bees. We've lost one hive over the winter. Uh, so that was the second queen that we'd lost. So we're down to the one hive although we will be getting another one off the beekeeping association hopefully in the next few weeks but we will be putting a catch box out for any swarming that goes on with the bees that we have. And they will swarm. When it will be, we don't know. Again, that's really weather dependent. So, one hive, but they're busy. They're out on a day like this collecting as much pollen as they possibly can. We've started scraping the weed and grass back off this field as we're going to plant it as a wild meadow with 
Christmas. I'm a partly planting orchard at the moment. But that will expand on that. We're also looking at putting another hive potentially in a year or so's time in the top field once it's planted out in the trees. As we've planted the trees that we know bees are going to like, especially when they start blooming and the catkins on the willow starts coming through. Uh, one of the big tasks that I've got this year is to sort the orchard out. I've uh, not planted wisely, I've probably planted too close together. Um, even though I've bought some uh, smaller varieties of apple, cherry, apple and cherry. Um, but they've been in for nearly three years now and are getting taller and bigger and wider. And it's going to be become increasingly difficult to maintain or actually get into the orchard. So uh, there's going to be some hard pruning done at some point. Again, I've got to look at the best time to do that. May have even missed it this year. Uh, and I'm going to probably dig the two Brayburns out. Um, the crop wasn't very good last year and the trees are not local trees. And as I said in last year's updates, the local trees do do far better than trees that I've bought off the internet. Um, but you learn from your mistakes. But again, that's, that's something that's on the top of the list uh, in the coming weeks. So we take you back down to the side of the polytunnel. We've got some more willow whips here. And all we've done is taken cuttings from the top field and put them off an existing willow of course and just put them, plunge them into a bin of water and we're just going to leave them and see what develops over the next few weeks and they'll just be planted straight back into the top field into the ground up there. So in the uh, over the winter um, we've built our all new dancing and singing propagator so it's twice the size of last year's and uh, we're already seeing the results from it. So, so far, we've uh, planted melon, cucumber and tomatoes. Bearing in mind, these were planted uh, February time and we've also planted some broad beans, some sweet corn and some celeriac. The celeriac hasn't come up yet, but um, it's always a... Bit of a, yeah, it's a bit of a sod, the slayer rack. It's a really well. slow germinator. What else have we got? Melons, cabbage. Yeah, I've done the melon. Sweet corn. Yeah. So it's a really good idea. So we've insulated it uh, with... Underneath as well. Underneath and around the sides. Brick built. Uh, and there's the uh, silver sand underneath, which carries the cable and conducts the heat. And we're normally hitting around 20, 25 degrees at the moment in there with the... With the so it's 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 it, it, it's going to really bear fruit, excuse the pun, but I think it's uh, what we've done is uh, that's working really well. Working really well. It's a really good idea. So that's one thing that we've done, and also what we've done is make some changes here in the vegetable beds around by the polytunnel. Uh, we were wasting a lot of time on streaming and battling with weeds, so we've basically over the last few months put a load of weed suppressant down, uh, graveled it. This was the existing asparagus bed, and then what we've done is we've moved the blueberries and last year's planted gooseberries out of the adjoining fields into the prepared beds here. Um, yeah, that one's not quite finished yet, but I'm, uh, again, it's on the list of things to do, which, uh, believe you me, is a small holder. Never goes down. You think you've got to the end, and lo and behold, there's more things to put on there. But we're really pleased with how what we've achieved here, and it's going to make life a whole lot easier. And, and, you know, we might at one point sit down and take a look at what we've done and what we've got. 
be really pleased with it. So into the polytunnel. Um, we're just taking the, or preparing the beds here for the tomatoes. The tomatoes which are germinated in the propagator. So that'll be going in uh, today. Again, we've uh, finally got around to put some weeds and pressing in the pathway for the polytunnel and gravelled it. Um, onions and the rhubarb, of course, which we've already started enjoying, is coming back. Now, we haven't even forced this, but bear in mind we're growing it in the polytunnel, so the warmer conditions uh, perhaps help it without us having to put it under a pot to, to force it at this time of year. Broad beans, which we popped in December last year, are again flowering, so hopefully we'll be seeing some bean pots on there in the not too distant future. But there's not a lot else at the moment, as I say, we've been working hard and we're preparing the beds as we speak, uh, but just coming out of the autumn and winter and it's now time for us to really crack on and uh, Get in at night and have a cup of tea, feel knackered. Well, yeah, obviously, uh, have the chickens and the ducks somewhere, but as I say, we've had so much rain. Ducks have enjoyed it. It is true what they say about ducks and rain. As you can see here, the, the uh, land was saturated and it was holding all the water. Um, we may even at some point have to consider putting drainage in because it's so close to the gate it just makes it a bit of a it, it's just not very pleasant walking through it sometimes and it's <laughs> you're, uh, you can get up to your knees in it and uh, you lose your welly fall over and get covered in it as you can see the water's just been gushing down through here into the into the stream we are on a slight uh, left to right slope. Doing all right for eggs. Uh, they're earning the keep again now. We're getting between uh, 12 and 14 a day, and all five of the female ducks, wherever they are, uh, are laying. So everything's as I say. It's uh, getting to that time of year again. It's getting really exciting. Just drop us a line if there's anything we can show you or if there's anything you want to know and uh, we'll respond accordingly. Thanks for viewing. See you later guys.